All right, let's see if I can make this work. A little quickie research review. Uh, no, I didn't shave. So I have a few favorite papers, and by favorite I mean like I find them amusing or they just kind of like tear apart some long-held uh, belief. Um, one of my favorite funny papers uh, was actually it examined, it did a haggis tolerance test. Right? If you know what a glucose tolerance test is, they give you 100 grams of straight glucose to measure blood sugar. This gave haggis to two different uh, either ethnic groups, um, the Scots and the Senesacs, um, to see what happened to their blood lipids. So the haggis tolerance test. Love that paper. All right, so this is one of those that just kind of crushes the current theme in science. And I'm not just uh, addressing it because it agrees with me because I didn't have an opinion either way. I just find it interesting. So background. In the 90s, there was a big claim over Bulgarian yogurt. They had found a town of uh, extremely old Bulgarians, like over a hundred, right? What are called super centenarians. And based on their age data, assumed that it had to be some food in the region, and it was clearly the yogurt. Well, when they did a little bit more digging, what they found was that uh, it was all a lie. What had happened is that men in the town had taken their father's name and age to avoid the draft. Basically, it was a big old lie. How does that lead into this paper? Currently, there's a tremendous amount of interest in supercentenarians in the U.S. and Italy in what are called the blue zones of Japan. And there's been a tremendous amount of data. Is it their diet? Is it their genetics? Is it their lifestyle? But as you can probably guess from the introduction, there may be an easier explanation. So the paper I am citing is by Newman S.J. It's titled, Supercentenarians and the Oldest Old are Concentrated into Regions with No Birth Certificates and Short Lifespans. And by that, I mean short average lifespans. Uh, it is pre-published in BioRxiv, and I will link to it. It has not been peer-reviewed, so it is entirely possible the results will be thrown out. And that's fine. So... Uh, Basically, they wanted to examine the claims of supercentenarians in different areas. They stated in the introduction, Previous work has noted the potential of population illiteracy, or heterogeneity, to explain remarkable age patterns. More recent investigations reveal potential role of errors and operator biases in generating old age survival patterns and data. In turn, these findings prompted a response with potentially disruptive implications that under such models, the, the majority, if not all, remarkable age records may be errors. And they get into this in detail in the discussion about how the errors might occur, and I'm not going to get into that because it's boring and tedious. So what they did in their methods, they examined data from what is called the Gerontology Research Group, and then they subdivided it and looked at U.S. data and Italian data primarily. They mention Okinawa in the discussion. They don't appear to look, have looked at the data individually, and they cite their own papers. So in looking at this, here's what they expected. Uh, in the U.S., um, there was a big boost or burst of... Um, an increase in statewide birth certificates from like 1880 to 1920 or so. What they expected was that the introduction of actual birth certificates would increase the number of supercentenarians. Here's what they found. As soon as you introduced birth certificates, it was associated with a sharp reduction in the number of people over 100. Uh, when birth, as they state, when birth certificates were official, the number fell by 80%. And 82% of the current uh, supercentenarians from that area were born before birth certificates existed. Hmm. Uh, in Italy, they found that the attainment of a remarkable age in these regions was actually associated with a short average lifespan in that area. Now, there's two sort of two ways you can look at this. Oh, they also point that. Uh, well, they say, likewise, findings from the Italian data support the hypothesis that these super semi-supercentenarians largely constitute a collection of age reporting errors. Because if the average lifespan in an area is, is fairly low, you have to come up with a good explanation for why there would be this large number of people near or over 100. They could be outliers, or it could be an error because they didn't have good record keeping. So in their discussion... They mention Italians over the age of 100 are concentrated in the poorest, most remote, and shortest lived provinces. While U.S. supercentenarians are concentrated in populations with incomplete vital registries, birth certificates, both patterns are difficult to explain through biology, but are readily explained as economic drivers of pension fraud and reporting error. Right? We know that people get a pension when they get above a certain age. If you tell people you're older than you are, you get access to that. Moving on to Okinawa. Uh, Okinawa has the highest number of centenarians per capita of any Japanese prefecture and remains world famous for remarkable longevity. 
Okinawa also has the highest murder rate per capita, the worst over 65 dependency ratio. I presume they mean dependency on the state for well or something. I don't know. The second lowest median income and the lowest median lifespan of all 47 Japanese prefectures. So it's like the yeah, Italy data. The overall age data is very low, and yet we have this large number of Sioux centenarians in what they describe later as a welfare-rich state. Uh, they that further mention, like the Blue Zone, islands of Sardinia and Icaria, Okinawa also represents the shortest-lived and second-poorest region of a rich, high-welfare state. These regions may have high, higher social connections and vegetable intakes, yet they also rank among the least educated and poorest regions of their respective countries. The hypothesis that these relatively low liter rates and in literacy rates and incomes are generating age-reported errors in pension fraud, and therefore remarkable age records, seems overlooked. For example, smoking rates 17 to 50 percent and literacy rates of 50 to 80 percent are often observed in samples of the oldest old. Surveying the blue zone of Ikaria, Chrysohu, and others observe that the oldest old have a below medium wage in over 95 to 98 percent of cases, moderate to high alcohol consumption, a 10 percent illiteracy rate, an average 7.4 years of education, and a 99 percent of rate of smoking in men. So unless you're going to argue maybe that smoking is part of the longevity aspect, pretty much the conclusion is that it's either outright laws or just data misreporting, just like in the Bulgarian example. Here was their conclusion. This was in the abstract. In the United States, supercentenarian status is predicted by the absence of vital registration, birth certificates. The state-specific introduction of birth certificates is associated with a 69 to 82% fall in the number of supercentenarian records. In Italy, which has more uniform birth certificates, vital registration, remarkable longevity is instead predicated by low per capita incomes and a short average life expectancy. Finally, the designated blue zones of Sardinia, Okinawa, and Ikaria correspond to regions with low incomes, low literacy, high crime rate, and short life expectancy, re expectancy relative to their national average. As such, relative poverty and short lifespan constitute unpredicted predictors of centenarian and supercentenarian status and support a primary role of fraud and error in generating remarkable human age records. Basically, you have a bunch of people who are illiterate living in areas with no record keeping who either don't know when they were born and are guessing at it or are lying about it to take advantage of welfare. So while it's a fun tale to talk about the extreme longevity in Japan and these other countries, the reality is that in the grand majority of cases, it's just not true. And that ends my quickie research review.